everyone, and welcome to the VitaCast, episode 53. I'm your host, Tyler Rathoff, and with me as usual is Kyle Wakeling. No, I'm not. I'm not really here. Oh. This is all an illusion, guys. Really? Yeah. Am, I, am I here? No. Oh. I'm this is, this is like that virtual reality episode of South Park. Oh. Nothing really exists. We're all in somebody's head. That I'm a is... computer program, Tyler. <laughs> Interesting. That makes me one too, right? I don't know. Maybe this is all in your head. <gasps> is this or maybe name? you are a computer program. Oh, God. And I made you to like keep myself company? That's right. Or maybe I made you. We have no idea. Or maybe someone else made us both to entertain them. No? No. Nah. <laughs> that's just stupid. Yeah, it's, that's unthinkable. <laughs> what the hell, Tyler? I don't even know. Anyways, this is the Vita cast, and we like to talk about weird things. <laughs> and also the Vita. So, let's let's jump into the Vita uh, with what we've been playing this week. And there's, there's a few things. Um, one of the new releases we're going to talk about is uh, Fantasy Hero Unsigned Legacy. I've been playing a little bit of that myself. Uh, I'm liking it, but I'm still really early in it. So I don't really have too much to say about it, but I'm, I'm enjoying it. Um, also, of course, Freedom Wars, still playing that and loving it, of course. And what else have I played? Oh, Final Fantasy X HD. I'm jumping back in that. I've been looking at my games that I haven't played lately, and I'm like, I really need to finish these because I just have way too many. <laughs> and I'm not finishing any of them, so it's getting a little frustrating. So I'm trying to jump back on my backlog and... Knock a couple of those out of there. Um, what else? Where's my Vita? There's my Vita! Let's check what I got. Kyle's loving this right now. <laughs> <laughs> what was your Vita in that you had to unzip it? <laughs> it's case. Oh, it has its own case and shit? Yep, I keep my Vita safe. That's special. My Vita's always naked. <laughs> oh, dirty Vita. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I played uh, Tales of Hearts R. I forgot about that one. <laughs> and a little bit of Minecraft. Not too much, just a little bit. So, yeah, what about you, Kyle? All right, well, Tyler, I got to tell you something. And that something is that yesterday I got my 64 gigabyte. <gasps> yeah. So now I'm, I'm one of the cool kids and I have, you know, all this room or had all this room as I've pretty much filled the card already. Um, I, I pulled pretty much everything I have out of my backlog and put it onto my Vita. And I just have like pages of games that I'm like, oh man, I got to play these. So I've been playing a lot this week. Um, I, I only jumped into like a couple of minutes of a couple of games yesterday. I didn't really dig into anything, um, but I played some Ollie Ollie. Uh, I played some PlayStation All-Stars. I played some Ridge Racer. Um, I played some... What else did I play? Oh, here we go. Let's look. Uh, I played a little Hotline Miami. Um, oh, I played Sonic. Uh, some Tukigen. And then, uh, of course, I played uh, their current review games I have, which are San Rankigo, Bon Appetit, and Tales of Hearts R, which... I think I'm getting towards the end of Tales of Hearts, and I definitely need to play some more Senran, although that'll pretty much be, you know, one sit-down I think I can get probably to the end of it. Because <laughs> um, every time I've played it so far, I've got hooked into it and had to pull myself away. So I don't think it'll that one will take much. Um, but yeah, I, uh, that's what I'm playing. Kind of everything, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Five minutes of this, five minutes of that. <laughs> Doesn't it feel great? To have it, it does. That <laughs> it does. And then because I upgraded my uh, Vita to the 64, I put the 16, it used to be an 8, into my um, PlayStation TV, and I feel that full of games to play now, too. So. <laughs> you were all the games, Tyler. <laughs> yes, sir. <sorry>. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that's awesome, because... You needed that, for sure. Definitely. I was always, you know, waiting for something to transfer or, you know, doing something. Or I'd have to, like, 
we'd have to figure out the um, lounge play games like way in advance. We couldn't like <laughs> switch it up or anything. It was it was crazy. Mm-hmm. Now I could just be like, whatever you guys want to play, I, I don't care. Whatever. Uh-huh. Minecraft, <laughs> Terraria. St- stuff that I have <laughs> on my Vita. <laughs> oh, now you got the room. Go neither, neither of those games will ever grace my Vita. And if they do, I give everybody who could ever meet me permission to smash it because <laughs> that's just disgusting no thanks I'm, okay I'm, i think i've told you before but we really need to do one just one episode of you playing terraria in lounge play and just listen to you raging and hating everyone <laughs> <laughs> it no it, it would not it would not go over well tyler <laughs> we'd start off and you'd be like what do i do i i collect this shit this is stupid <laughs> <laughs> I make this? That's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, um, even though I tagged Terraria, I don't know why I tagged it in uh, PlayStation Plus, I would never start it on my account because then I would be graced with the, that horrible 0% trophy list. <laughs> so that would never happen. So you'd have to buy the game for me on a separate account for me to even play it like that. So that's not going to happen, Tyler. <laughs> well, think, think about it. If you ever did play it on your main account, I could easily get you like forty percent of the trophies in one day <laughs> by just giving you a whole bunch of my gear and be like, "Here you go, you're set. Here's trophies. They go popping." <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm I'm one of those people that has to do everything I can in a game before I give up on it, and that would just piss me off that it was forty percent, not a hundred percent, or whatever I can you know reasonably you think i could get to that would piss me off and then i'd actually have to play it and then that would really piss me <laughs> off so you could live stream it and just it'd be hilarious <laughs> yeah live stream it uh, everything i would be like live streaming would just be like swear words and like, like <laughs> really smashing shit and like banging on desks and throwing stuff I, it would just be a mess tyler right, it'd be so- the most angry game <laughs> you've ever heard <laughs> So what I figured out, whoever <laughs> knows Kyle personally, go to his house, grab his Vita, download Terraria, and just play it once. So then when he checks his trophy list one time, he's going to be like, what the fuck? <laughs> and it's going to be the greatest thing ever. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> good, good thing um, the PSN now asks you to sign in every time if you have a PlayStation Vita and a PlayStation TV. Every time you try and get on the store, because now nobody can do that. <laughs> You have to have me already signed into the device, and I, there's no chance you're going to get my beat out of my hand, and my PlayStation TV would need to sign in, so good luck. Or something out. Good luck, Tyler. <laughs> Anyways, before we just keep talking about something that you hate, <laughs> let's talk about those uh, new releases. Oh, wait, no. Let's go to the reviews first. So what do we got this week, huh? All right, so there's only one new review up since last we checked. So this is not the week of reviews like last week was. Um, <laughs> so we're just going to have to figure out a different name for this one. I have no idea what yet. We usually come up with it at the last minute. Yep. Um, <laughs> but the one review from this week is Retro City Rampage DX, which was reviewed by Charlie, and he gave it a 4.4 out of 5. And he says, quote, The definitive version of Retro City Rampage, Retro City Rampage DX, takes everything that made the original game fun and improves upon the areas that made it not so fun. With a lot to do and so many pop culture references to spot, this is a game that deserves to be taken, yet doesn't take itself seriously. End quote. So it looks like if you're into that kind of game, I'm not actually sure what kind of game that is. I forget. It's like a pixelated Grand Theft Auto. Ah, that's why I haven't played it. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I'm heavily adverse to things Grand Theft Auto. Um, but <laughs> but anyway, um, if you're into that kind of thing, uh, check out Charlie's review because he gave it a 4.4 out of 5, which is a pretty damn good score if you ask me. Yeah, I'm like you. I actually kind of want this game, but I don't know if it's worth... It's kind of like that whole thing of Soul Sacrifice to Soul Sacrifice Delta, where I'm just not really feeling it. But, of course, I felt SSD when you finally convinced me to get it. So, I mean, I'm thinking about it, but it's a big chunk of change to drop down for something I'm not totally confident in. (laughs) I don't even know shit about the game, but... I can just tell you right off the bat, Retro City Rampage to Retro City Rampage DX, I can tell you what would drive you to play the game. 
the trophies. <laughs> There's trophies, and there wasn't any trophies in the mobile version. So you didn't get trophies. No, Wait, you didn't. No, there's, there's trophies because the Retro City Rampage was a Vita game. Oh. Well, then I'm wrong. <laughs> but I'm sure I have no idea DX, what I'm talking about. You don't. There you go. <laughs> but I'm, I'm sure the DX1 yeah. has its own set, its new set of trophies. So. Well, there you go. More trophies. <laughs> exactly. It, it's not the same because if you go from like other games like Aqua Kitty to Aqua Kitty right. DX, I, I thought it was the same shit. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, I'm, Retro I'm, City Rampage. <laughs> yeah, that came out a while ago, but it was definitely a Vita game. A Vita native game or whatever. Anyways, so yeah, yes. good review. So if anyone else has picked that up, you should uh, send us an email or something. Let me know how, what you're thinking of it, if you agree or not with Charlie's review. And whether Tyler should buy it and jump back in or not. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, let's talk about those new releases. So... Someone's going to take it away. We never know who, but they're going to take it away. So take it away, person with those new releases. Hey everyone, Tyler here. Uh, I'm going to be bringing those new releases for you. So for Europe, uh, you guys are getting Final Horizon, Invokers Tournament, which is only, it's not available in Bahrain, 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 Cyprus, France, Israel, Lebanon, Malta, Oman, Romania, Russia, Slov- Slovakia, South Africa, and the Ukraine. Uh, also, Jetpack Joyride Deluxe, Luxury Fun Triple Scoop, uh, MXGP Compact to Full Game Upgrade, and then there is the MXGP, the Official Motocross Video Game Compact. So it looks like you can buy the upgrade, blah, blah, blah. There's also the t- PlayStation 20th Anniversary theme, which is free, so you can check that out. And of course, like usual, tons of DLC. Um, so yeah, go check out some DLC stuff if you're interested or have those games that are having those sales. Uh, for North America, we are getting uh, Fantasy Hero Unsigned Legacy and Final Horizon. And PlayStation Plus for both uh, territories, um, we are getting Final Horizon and Titan Attacks for free. So go check those out. And Fantasy Hero Unsigned Legacy is US only, uh, Canada to be announced at a later date. So I think we talked about it in the podcast. So you'll get to hear Kyle or already heard him talk about his frustration with that. And as usual, tons of DLC. So grab, grab some DLC. And that is our new releases, so back to the podcast. Thank you, person, that brought us those new releases. Uh, Kyle, any of these you picking up? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Quick and easy answer. Yeah, um, well, they kind of screwed me on Fantasy Hero on Sun Legacy, because even though I was a little tad kind of interested, I didn't know a whole bunch about it, but... I was like, okay, maybe, you know, I want to hear more about it. And then they came up and they were like, yeah, it's US only for now. And I just stopped looking because I don't even want to be bothered when they do that. So Yeah, that sucks. That Arc System works, man. They're famous for that. Yeah, it's a fun game, too, which is disappointing that you're not going to be able to jump in. <laughs> yeah, although the, they've said it's coming to Canada. Like, I mean, they said, you know, uh, I think it's just 20, early 2015, they're bringing it to... Um, Europe and Canada, but like I mean, when they do stuff like that and they kind of single out one kind of country or a couple countries in a region, and really not a lot of other companies do that. It's just kind of I don't know yeah, offsetting. Nice. <laughs> so yeah, I'm probably not getting that because by the time it rolls around, I'll be like, man, I got all these other games to play. Yeah. Uh, well, if it gets dropped down in price, or if you ever see it on sale for a decent price, I'd, I'd recommend it, because I'm enjoying Perfect it. Perfect, it's it. plus, maybe. Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> a fun little fact, one of the guys that is the main, or not, yeah, he's kind of the main character. One of the main characters in the game is voiced by the same guy that voices uh, Kyoto and Sword Art Online, that hollow fragment. Ah, uh, cool. It's a fun little fact that I've noticed, like, listening to, to him talk, I'm like, <laughs> yep, that's definitely the same guy. <laughs> <laughs> So I was interested and they tweeted it out or whatever. I was like, oh, cool. (laughs) Anyways, I picked that game up, like I was saying, and I'm I'm playing it, but yeah, not not too far on it. Um, Although one thing that really bugs me is that 
a lot of the like they're not cut scenes it's more of just like a narrative cut scene where they're just talking uh when you're on the battlefield um it has all your like teammates with you but when you actually start the mission you're by yourself which is frustrating because you, you get to see all your teammates out there and they're all like let's go get these bad guys and then boom let's go get it and it's just you by yourself it's like wait this kind of throws off the experience it kind of bugs me i don't know i wish they would have made the the other characters like ai or something so that they're at least running out there with you fighting and whatnot okay what so let me get this straight you go up to like a crowd of people in the cutscene. it's like yeah let's go get them and then you run it out of the battlefield and it's just you yes nice yeah it threw, it threw me off when i first saw that like I was like, oh, cool, let's all go get these guys. And then, boom, it's just me. I was like, what? That's like, that's like backwards Tales of Hearts, because you run around and you're just the person. You don't see the people that you're, you know, bringing with you. And then you get into a battle and all these people appear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of those things that annoys me. And then, I think there's one more. Oh, there's a, a slight translation problems with it. So, you'll, it's kind of like Hollow Fragment. It's not as bad, for sure. But there is occasional, like, just not good grammar <laughs> like not what i just <laughs> like what i just said so it can be a little frustrating or take you out of the experience when you're trying to read something and then it's like wait that doesn't really work <laughs> <laughs> but it still makes sense like you can you can make sense of it but anyways uh final horizon i don't really know much about it. i saw the it, that's three on plus I, no no it's not wait yes it is yes <laughs> that one's three on plus i don't know if i really care to get it it looks Meh, to me, but I don't know. Are you gonna pick it up, Kyle? Um, I'm going to tag it. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm not too sure about it. Uh, like I said, I wouldn't be buying it. Uh, I know it's one of the new releases. Um, but if I ever get bored and you know want to try something different, I guess that would be something I would try. Yeah, personally, I don't think it's the best plus month for us. I mean, both these games I don't have, but both these games I don't really want. <laughs> yeah. See, the thing for me is that I don't really rely on Plus for free games. I mean, once in a while, for me, one comes around that I'm like, oh, I don't have that, or, you know, maybe I'll try that, or something like that, yeah. and I tag it. But a lot of the stuff that I've actually got from Plus sits at the bottom of my backlog right now. So, I don't know. Plus, to me, isn't about the, the you know, free games. Even though they're really free, but whatever. Um, <laughs> uh, it isn't about those. It's more about the deals. So I, I'm all about the, you know, getting the, getting those low prices on the sales <laughs> than I am the, uh, the games. And yeah. yeah, it's, it's just been kind of a shit show here and there. Yeah. Well, maybe next month, January, my birthday month, they'll just give us something crazy. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> It's the new year. They got to start it off with a bang, right? Maybe. <laughs> I, I don't want to be too optimistic about things like that because then uh, when they fuck us, I'll be more pissed off. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Anyways, let's uh, jump into the news. We've been talking a lot about the earlier stuff in the podcast, more than I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> You're really chatty tonight, Teller. Hey, it funny. happens. <laughs> All right. The news. First up. Kaga Create seemed to be going all in with the dating sims on Vita first. Higarashi When They Cry Sui was announced earlier this month. And now we've got Hayaka Yayoran Elixir, record of Torimia Revival. Thanks, Kyle, for this news story. Getting, You're welcome. The, <laughs> getting the Vita treatment from them as well. Originally developed by AXL and released mid-2013 as an 18-plus PC game. The Vita version will be a bit more tame, though they promised to add new uh, two new heroines as well as a new opening and ending tracks to sweeten the deal. Hayaka Rayon Ran Elixir record of the Tarinian revival for PlayStation Vita will be available sometime this spring in Japan. Next up... Have you been waiting for news on Fly Hunter Origins? Ripstone got in touch with us to tell us that the upcoming Superfly platformer from Steel World Games will be hitting the Vita on the 9th of December in North America and the following day in Europe and will be available for £4.99, €6.99, and 6.99 uh, US. If you haven't 
been keeping up with its progress. The title stars Zack, a bumbling alien spaceship janitor, and his ambitions of being a fly hunter. He works on board the fly hunter crew's legendary spaceship, the Frog, but deep down he longs for an exciting adventure of his own. Somewhere in Earth's orbit, while the fly hunters are deep in Kairos, Cry, Cryro, Cryro, I don't know why I can't say that word right now. Cryos, cryo sleep. <laughs> the frog's important cargo of extremely rare insects is mysteriously jettisoned. Jettisoned. These difficult words for me today. <laughs> <laughs> and they're English ones too. Tally. I know it's. I get th- just confused with the Japanese words, and then I, the English words look crazy to me. <laughs> Anyways. It gets thrown into space, I would assume, is what that word is meaning. Yes, jettisoned is oh, evacuated into space. Jettisoned. That word is really easy to say. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not that hard now. <laughs> it's late. It's okay. It's, it's okay. okay. I, understand, I understand that it's been late and that you're really chatty and the Japanese words screw you up. Just continue. <laughs> Jettisoned into space, crash landing back on Earth. It seems that clumsy janitor Zack is the only one around to save the day. Fly Hunter Origins has been developed by Steel World Games, who is comprised of five comprised <laughs> of five film animation veterans that took with a combined sixty years sixty years of experience and their passion and creativity to make games and start their own indie studio. Having worked on Disney Pixar's Brave, The Incredibles, Toy Story, Monster High, Monsters University, Ratatouille, and many others, they have told us that the game will feature a compelling story driven gameplay as well as being supported by top class cut scene animations as well as an intuitive pick up and play controls. Uh, make sure to look for it next week in next week's PlayStation Network update. And next up. Delve Interactive have confirmed that they're bringing Poncho to PlayStation Vita in 2015. Poncho is a game set in a 2D world in which you set, start in the center of. There is no particular direction in which you have to go. The world will be explored by the player moving parallax 3D layers. Poncho, Poncho will also feature a randomly generated world which will change and react based around the movements that Poncho the robot makes. As soon as we know more about Poncho, including a release date, We'll be sure to let you know here on the Vita Lounge. You're welcome for all those hard stories, Tyler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, moving on with the news. A few months ago, we brought you the news that Reaper, the upcoming free RPG from British developer Luke Bernard, will be a PlayStation Vita and PlayStation TV exclusive. But after months of silence, an announcement via the PlayStation blog has revealed new multiplayer details for the RPG, and interestingly, a name change. Death Tales is the new title, as well as being free and exclusive to PlayStation Vita and PlayStation TV, the game will also feature both online and local multiplayer features. Local co-op will be for the PlayStation TV version, whereas online will be in the form of two-player co-op on the Vita. We are also given details of the different game modes available within the game. There will be two separate modes, which will be Story, which is styled as an open-world RPG, and you'll be able to play co-op in this mode as well. And Tales. This mode shows the inspiration behind the game's new title. Tales mode has the player exploring a hub town and interacting with a variety of different characters. The town folk will assign you different tasks, which you can complete in co-op or alone. A nice addition is the fact that levels will be randomly generated, meaning a new and unique experience awaits each time you play. For those unfamiliar with the game's premise, you play as Death, who after a very long time of claiming souls from the evil and innocent alike, became depressed and lonely. So she decides to let her hair down and falls in love with a mortal man. In her love-drunk state, Death disobeys her sisters and makes her lover, lover immortal, thus making him the first Reaper. Corrupted by his new power, he quickly leaves Death, breaking her heart. Unfortunately, crossing death isn't the cleverest of moves, and she goes on the rampage looking for revenge. She deploys a new army of reapers and is looking to make the world pay for her misery, and we get to come along for the ride. We still await a release date of Death Tales, but we will be sure to keep you updated. (laughs) (laughs) Alright. Sounds like Tyler's 
moderately excited. <laughs> moderately. <laughs> moderately. <laughs> anyway, moving on. NIS America has announced the Western release dates for its localization of Criminal Girls in White Only. An updated version of the Japan only PSP title, Criminal Girls. Criminal Girls Invite Only includes a host of brand new content as you explore the depths of hell and lead a gang of female delinquents on a quest to absolve themselves and be reborn on Earth. Criminal Girls Invite Only's basic plot details are as follows. Quote, seven, seven delinquents, seven sins, and only one way out. Just hired for a new mysterious job, you'll soon discover that this isn't your normal prison gig. You've been entrusted with the care of a crew of girls whose sins have been have damned their souls to hell and an eternity of punishment. Their only hope of salvation is for you to recognize their unique histories and to guide them along the path to redemption. Navigate through four trials of redemption program and motivate your crew of delinquents to learn the skills to redeem themselves. End quote. They've also released key points of the title which detail some of the game's features. Mind your manners. These girls aren't your typical RPG team. They have minds of their own. To be to defeat the convicts along the way, which are doing their time in Hell's Dungeons, uh, you'll need to listen to your team's desires and choose your path to victory from the ever-evolving repertoire of skills, spells, and combo attacks they want to use. Touching gameplay. Connect with the girls. Uncover each of their unique personalities through the one-on-one -on -one motivational sessions with a unique use of the front touchscreen and rear touchpad. I assume this is the dirty bit. Uh, <laughs> fulfill the girls' special requests to discover more about their interesting and often dark pasts. Criminal Girls Reborn. This PlayStation Vita update will mark the first time a Criminal Girls game makes its way to the US and with English text. The update also brings previously unplayable characters into the fray, Mew and Himakami, and also includes brand new scenarios and levels to challenge your prison smarts. It also revamps the much lauded motivational gameplay with updated artwork, brand new live 2D graphics and effects. The game is set to launch in North America on February 3rd and Europe on February 6th. Available in both physical and digital copy, as well as being fully compatible with the PlayStation TV. Aside from the standard edition, a $51.99 limited edition will be available, purchasable at NISA's online store. It will include an art book, soundtrack CD, and a special box alongside a physical copy of the game. And next up. We have Katokawa Games is planning to release a low price version of love adventure game for Volcano Kiss this February. This new version of the title, dubbed Epicor Photo Cano Kiss, will reportedly cost 3,980 yen plus tax on release and feature new package art. First print copies will bundle in seven different VLC items, the list of which is available on this site. As well as the bundling of content, this new release has spurred the announcement of new content as well, as the new costume Adam Ons, Heartful Maid, Colorful Bikini, and Carnival Fantasy are set to be released for the title. Ebicore Photo Piano Kiss will be available February 2nd in Japan. Next up, uh, remember that hefty new Sen no Kaseki 2, aka Trails in the Flash 2? Uh, patch Marcus introduced us to a few weeks ago. Well, this week's Dengeki PlayStation Magazine has dropped a ton of new details on it, including the existence of a character transformation accessory and the introduction of memory mode and the easy guidance system. First up is the character transformation accessory dubbed the Mirror of Reveries. Reveries. It can be purchased at healing installations and is able to be used only in the game's Corridor of Reveries. Equipping the Mirror of Reveries will allow the player to transform you into one of the following five characters, including their voices and other personal variables. Rixi Mao, Lloyd Bannings, Vita Quadded, Altina Orion, Crow Armburst. Such easy names. Next is Memory Mode a new non-gameplay option which unlocks after completing the game. Upon activation, players can view cinematics and bonding events they've encountered at least once in their playthrough. 
giving them a second look at some of the game's pivotal scenes. Last up is the easy guidance system, which will also be available upon completing the game once. It will be used in New Game Plus mode. It allows players to have character levels raised during guidance slash side story segments and to only view event scenes during them. The patch will release, was released across all Asian regions as of November 28th, so get, go give the game an update if you haven't already. Uh, next up, Dengeki PlayStation Magazine and Dengeki Online have posted new details for the upcoming sequel to Hollow Fragment, confirming the presence of Philia and Klein in this new title. Philia originally made her debut in Hollow Fragment, having not been present in any sort of online media before that. Returning in Lost Song, she goes from blonde to raven-haired as she moves to the Alfheim online in-game race of Spriggan. It has also been revealed that she'll be sporting an all-purpose build skilled with both the dagger and support magic, and that she chooses to work as a treasure hunter in-game. As for Klein, his character is part of an Alfheim online in-game race called the Salamanders, and he's still mainly a swordsman above all else. Sort of online Lost Song is due to, for release in Japan on March 26th, with no word yet on a Western localization. Time to change that. <laughs> and lastly here for me is a long one, so sit back and enjoy. Uh, over the past few months, we have brought you a whole host of updates and images for the upcoming Digimon PS Vita title Cyber Slew. Now we have even more details this time regarding a new character and how to digivolve. So let's start with a new character who is known as Rai Kishbi. Kishbi. <laughs> she is the operating officer at Kameshiro Enterprise, which oversees the Eden project. Though on the outside, she seems considerate of everyone around her and acts mellow. Deep down, she is always confident in her own decision-making and will never consider an alternative opinion uh, once she has already decided how to approach a given situation. Basically, it's her way or the highway. There's also a new Digimon known as Crusadermon, a Holy Knight-type Digimon and Royal Knights member who is king of all Knightmon. Its goal is unknown, but it's deeply involved in events that are happening in the real world, and if you hear dogs going crazy, it's because someone downstairs is moving around, so they might start barking. <laughs> it is not labeled as either good or evil, as it has its own opinion on how to achieve justice, but it is important to note that it is, has no mercy for the weak, and it is ruthless in the way it executes missions. It seems it is up to, it is up to us to decide whether its methods are just. Next, we learn a little more about how you will scan, collect, and convert your Digimon. Your handy Digimon scanner will begin scanning and collecting data on the Digimon you find out in the field as soon as you discover them. If you gather 100% of the data, it is possible to convert the data into the Digilab and watch it grow from DigiEgg to Digimon. The higher the per percentage you obtain, the better the converted Digimon's base abilities. And finally, we learn about Digivolution and Rare Digivolution. As you win battles, your Digimon skill points and levels will increase. Of course, this will enable you to digivolve them into new Digimon of your choosing. However, each digivolution requires certain conditions, which vary from Digimon to Digimon. But if you are impatient and want stronger Digimon quicker, there are other rare digivolution methods. You can cause digivolution and then de-digivolution of a Digimon to break through level caps, as well as training up uh, latent skill points. Some digivolutions require certain items. Digimon Story Cyber Slew is set to release in Japan during spring 2015, as Bandai Namco seems to love teasing us. TVL will be on hand as soon as the, any further details are announced. So you can say digivolution fine, but when it comes to jettison, you're completely boned. <laughs> uh, actually, the fifth. <laughs> 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 All right, moving on to the news then. The Binding of Isaac Rebirth is set to get a whole lot bigger as game creator Edmund McMillan has announced plans to add to the game's content with a new expansion. McMillan, who originally released the game on Steam for PCs back in 2011, said, quote, I have big plans for this expansion. I hope to add a very huge chunk of gameplay in the form of a new game mode that will almost double the amount of things you can do. End quote. 
The Binding of Isaac Rebirth was offered in last month's PlayStation Plus list, so I imagine a lot of you are looking forward to this one. As such, the Vita Lounge will be sure to keep an ear to the ground, but for now, all we've heard regarding a date is the quite vague window of 2015. Next up, La Mulana EX has received a Japanese release date. An updated version of the 2005 PC game, La Mulana was announced earlier this year as coming in Q4, and even announced as December. But it wasn't until just a few days ago that it was given a solid date. Said to be released on the Japanese PlayStation Store December 17th, Rising Star Games has also announced that the game will be released in North America and Europe but has yet to confirm a specific date. Though, truth be told, as it was hinted for December in the West 2. Although I don't remember where I heard that. <laughs> I know I heard it, though. Um, exclusive to the beta version, the game will also feature an illustrated bestiary where you can browse through images of characters and monsters. So expect La Mulan EX on the Japanese store on the 17th, and we'll have to wait and see about that Western release date. And so in a blog post on the website, Relvo stated, quote, We wanted to release the game during December, but we've decided not to in the end. We've been working really hard throughout Baboon's development and didn't want to rush it now that we're so close to the end. We wanted to polish every detail of the game for you to enjoy it the way it's meant to be. End quote. We also shared a new screenshot of the game, as well as confirming that the game is almost done and just needs a little more polish. If you're interested in the screenshot, it's available on the site. And that's the news time. Did you mean it? I, I mean it. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy, indeed, because now we get to move on to these things called talking points, Tyler. Oh, move it along. Alrighty. So the first talking point, as usual, is announced release games we're looking forward to from the week. So what looks good, Dalek? Fly Hunter Origins. It's it's piqued my interest. Oh yeah? Yeah. With the the guys behind it being very Pixar centric and whatnot. I love those movies that they worked on. I'm hoping it, it just it brings it back. And it's <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> So I'm a little interested in that. Also, Criminal Girls Invite Only. It, it I don't really know too much about it. I need to look up some gameplay of it because I don't know if it's my style or not. <laughs> <laughs> you keep hearing me say, "Oh, that's bad and naughty stuff," and now you're like, "Oh, I gotta, I gotta find a movie with this game." I do. <laughs> 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 um, what else? What else? Of course, Sword Art Online Lost Song. Getting some more information about that. It's always nice to see that. Um, and I just need to announce it over here. And uh, I'm seeing with them announcing another game, they need to announce Digimon's story cybersleep over here. Because I want that as well. And uh, what you just ended with, uh, Baboon, sounds really interesting. And I would love to give that game a go. How about you, Kyle? Alrighty, well. Um, I'm not super interested in Fly Hunters, although it has kind of piqued my interest enough to kind of wait and see, I guess. Um, also, um, the, uh, sort of a line lost song that's, that kind of goes without saying, uh, <laughs> but I'll say it anyway. Um, I would love for a Digimon story, uh, localization, even though I did not like Digimon way back in the day, um. The game looks really good, and I would play that. So, bring it on. <laughs> and, of course, Baboon. Um, the, the release date that they've said that they're moving is actually the European release date. A North American release date hasn't been given or windowed yet, so we don't really know when it's coming, although they have said that it is going to come. So, we, we kind of have to wait and see for that one. But I am interested, and... I like the uh, screenshot that they provided on the site. Um, has an anime girl in it, so I was like, <laughs> "Yeah!" <laughs> and I think one of the commenters, I think it was Lester, uh, was like, "Yeah!" So, yeah, <laughs> showed us Lester, who never sends us mail anymore. Lester, yeah. Uh, all right, so that's that's pretty much all I'm looking forward to as far as stuff we've talked about this week. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, all right. There's a vehicle outside. 
that is probably going to shut the garage door. So you might hear the garage door all of a sudden. So just be prepared, people. That's okay. I also heard your cell phone vibrate and a couple other things. I can, I can hear a lot now, Tommy. You can hear your mic is, is very much. clear. <laughs> <laughs> I got to be very careful. We'll be able to hear like your heart beating soon. <laughs> <laughs> just wait. That would be creepy. <laughs> it would be very creepy. I wonder if I put it like on my chest if you actually really could hear it. I have no idea. You want to test it? <laughs> Do it. All right. Now. Oh, there goes the garage. God damn it. <laughs> Let's wait for the garage to go. This is real life, people. This is live. Actually, not for you. It's live for us. <laughs> <laughs> and we're waiting. What are you, oh. like, right beside the garage, huh? The garage is right under me. Oh, it's under you. <laughs> yeah, I'm on the second story. <laughs> ah, I see. All right, here we go. Heartbeat time. Nope, you're dead. <laughs> damn. Maybe if I like ran like a mile or something and came <laughs> back and then it it would be like beating really hard, then maybe. We'll test then, yeah, yeah, go around a mile. I'll be right back. Oh wait. <laughs> Alright, I think we should move on to our second talking point, which is the lack of announced dates for announced titles. So have you noticed this at all, Tyler? Yeah, it's it's a little frustrating. I've noticed a lot of games were wondering when we're going to actually be able to get these things, but yeah, I, I don't really understand why it's happening. What about, why do you think this is happening, Kyle? Tell me. Enlighten me. I honestly have no idea why this is happening. Um, as far as why I couldn't really put, you know, my finger on it as far as, you know, one source. It, it just seems like for the last while nobody has really announced dates for the West. Like, I mean, they've been announcing games here and there and saying stuff's coming, but they're just like, oh, 2015 or, oh, 2014. And then, like, I mean, the actual list that I have here of games for 2014 that haven't released yet is is pretty long. I mean, I think it's like 50 or, or so items here. So there's there's 50 games that they've said, hey, they're coming in 2014. It's now December 3rd <laughs> here. Um, and we've not even heard, you know, release date, um, anything more specific than Q4 or 2014. So, like, I mean, I don't, I don't really know what they're doing there. Um, and as far as actually, like, announced games that they've said, you know, this is coming to Vita, and then never said anything about the release date at all. So, like, they could have announced it two years ago and just never said anything again, or they announced it, you know, yesterday, and they didn't give us release dates. We have, like, 70 of those. So, like, I mean, and most of those aren't, like, I've, I've been keeping track of, you know, what goes in and what goes out and what gets cancelled and what becomes vaporware, and I remove most of that kind of stuff from the list. So, I mean, even if you're nitpicking 60 games solid, for sure, um, on that list that they've just said, you know, this is coming to be that, and then never said when it's coming at all. So, like, I mean, it could be tomorrow, it could be 2017, like, we have no idea. Um, and then the the actual list for uh, 2015 that they've said, you know, 2015 and never said anything, that's 50 long. So, I mean... There, there's games coming. It's it's not like they haven't said, you know, there's stuff coming. It's just we have no idea when. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, like, I mean, even the Charlie's list for um, the December release games was, was fairly small compared to the other, um, the other, you know, ones that we've known about beforehand. Usually we have a, a spattering of games. This time we've had, like, I think it was five or six in his list. That's going up. Not very many at all. So hmm. it's, it's, it's hard. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, who knows <laughs> the reason? There has to be something behind it. <laughs> yeah, Maybe they're man. just lazy or just <laughs> don't feel like saying anything yet. Yeah, it just could be that there's there's so much stuff and, and when they started, it just kind of works out that, you know, they can't really give us anything specific right now. But I mean, even if you say, you know, Q1 or something like it gives people kind of an idea when this when this kind of stuff is spacing out instead of oh this may come you know tomorrow or may come a year from now do i start saving now do i you know not worry about it like what do i people a lot of people you know plan these things and 
yeah, it's it's not gonna work out if you if they you know stealth release everything like they did last <laughs> December, and if we get a whole bunch of shit this December, that's not gonna be fun. No, not at all. No. Hmm. Maybe someone out there knows a better reason. So let us know. Why are they doing this? And if you're listening and you have games that you know are coming out or whatever, you know, get in touch with us. We'd like to know some even Windows. We we'd love to you know update our our listeners and the people in the lounge um, that you know you're still thinking of releasing and that it's coming and that you you have like a time frame in mind instead of just whenever we get to it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we should head on to the last bit, or one of the bits here. One of the last bits. Listener mail. <laughs> All right, so listener mail, but not only ha- do we have the listener mail that we got from Gasper this week, and I will attempt to pronounce his name right in a minute, <laughs> but we'll get to that. Um, <laughs> um, but we also have quite a few responses from Twitter. I just sent out a blast um read it before we started the podcast any last minute stuff and we got quite a few responses so there's a little bit to talk about so let's get you uh first up let's do this one from gasper and (laughs) i'll read it before i attempt the name uh to answer your question on what i'm getting or what rather what i got on black friday this is what we were talking about last podcast we said why don't you give us you know what you're getting um nothing because i'm getting paid on the fifth so he hasn't even got paid yet. He's screwed. He doesn't get anything right now. Um, but when I do, I'm planning on importing a 64 gigabyte Vita card. Thumbs up to that. I just got mine. Because oh, yeah. 32 gigabytes isn't really compatible with PlayStation Plus anymore. And Solaris Japan has this one gigabyte cost one buck deal right now. So why not? He says, also, you need to work on your, and then it's an S with like a V symbol thing above it and he says just saying sincerely gasper and in the name of you know getting to know my listener i looked up what the hell that symbol is and apparently i hope i'm saying this right but his name is gasper and it's a it's a sh- sound so <laughs> i think <laughs> so correct me if i'm wrong gasper um but i think that's more correct how to say your name um, because it's probably not 100% as I don't have your accent. Um, but yeah, so there we go. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a weird way to say it, but when I first saw the, the little above the, the S, I was like, yeah, we're going to say this wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, generally, um, unless it's, you know, uh, French or a Japanese um you know, symbol. I have no idea what the hell those symbols mean, so I'm going to pronounce all of them wrong. <laughs> that's that's one thing that I'm not very knowledgeable about. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, moving on. Our next one up. Uh, we have this one is from Extema. So, Extema at X-T-E-M-M-A on Twitter. And he says, don't you wish a PlayStation 20th anniversary Vita edition? So I don't know if you guys know, it depends on whether you've looked at news between when we're recording this, because it just happened, um, and when this comes out. Um, but they just announced a 20th anniversary PlayStation 4 um, that's colored like the original PlayStation, that gray color. Um, and it's limited edition. It comes in, I think they said 12,300. Uh, numbered units, and that's worldwide, and that's all they're giving. Um, so it's like a super limited edition. And the, as for whether or not I wish there was a 20th anniversary Vita edition, yes, but no, because I know it would be a PS Vita 2000, and I don't want one. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Tyler? Yes, I would want one, and I would probably buy it. Because... Yeah. If they did the limited release, just like the PS4, I mean, it would sell out. <laughs> and I'm surprised they don't. Because, <laughs> I mean, it, it's... Uh, actually, I'm not surprised. It's Sony. or It's PlayStation. This is what they do. They don't care about the Vita. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, I, I would get it. Even if it was a 2000, I'd buy it. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so there you go, Extema. Um... 
I guess since you asked the question, we don't have to ask if you uh, wish there was a 20th anniversary of Evil Edition. So, good on you on that, but sucks that we're not getting one. <laughs> Even though it would be a shitty 2000, I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to anybody who loves your 2000, because at least you have to be there, right? Right. That's right. true. There you go. Anyway, <laughs> moving on, our next uh, listener question comment is from Shay Batty, and that's at Bergster30 on Twitter. And she says, what Vita game would you say you have put the most hours into? I'll let all you right. go first on this one now. Wait, all right, Kyle, hold on. It's between... I Okay, all right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to Me and you should say the game at the same time, okay? <laughs> you think so? I don't think we're... I have a feeling that we might have the same game. But then you just recently reviewed a game that I'm, you might have put way more hours into. Okay? I don't think so. All right, anyways, ready? Okay. On the yes. count of three. When I say three, we're going to say the names, okay? All right. All right, one, two, three. Percent Hot Shot Skull. Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Hot Shot Skull for me, man. All right, it's Persona 4 Golden. <laughs> I put 160 hours, I think, into that. And I still need to play more so I can platinum it, but I don't know if I'll ever do it because it's just so much time. <laughs> but anyways, you played Hot Shots Golf. Go ahead. Yeah, um, easily um, the most hours that I've put into any Vita game. Um, it was one of the first games I got for Vita. It's my most played. It's the game that I go back to, and I'm like, oh, what do I want to play? I can't decide. Mm, Hot Shots, because that's never a wrong choice. And <laughs> I played it a whole bunch of times on lounge play, and I probably have played it at least twice a week um like a, a full 18 holes at least um other than the last two months since i've got my vita at least twice a week um and sometimes like <laughs> twice a day um and sometimes for hours at a time <laughs> so yeah I, I i would easily estimate that i put over 300 hours into the game it's yeah it's it's my love. <laughs> I love nice. it. Um, but yeah, pers- Persona's probably up there. Um, sort of Online is definitely up there. Killzone is definitely up there. Yeah, There's quite a few games that I've probably put over 100 hours into. So yeah, there's, qu- there's quite a few up there, but I think Hot Shots is by far blows them out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be interesting to actually see your playtime. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think it shows, because if it did, uh, I think I would have seen it going through all the menus and shit. Yeah. Making sure I had everything in, everything tuned the way I like it. So, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's what we have. What about you? Uh, as we always try and get, you know, the answers from the, the commenters, but you didn't give <laughs> yours, so now you're going to have to get in the next podcast, like, you know, so many other people have done. <laughs> but moving on to our next question, uh, PS Vita Collector at Vita Collector says, what do you think about collecting different Vita limit, limited or color variation consoles? So what do you think, Todd? <laughs> <laughs> what do I think of collecting just different types of Vita consoles or just consoles in general? I think they're talking about like uh you know, getting like a Vita and then getting like a different color and like a limited edition, like all you know, like oh, okay, okay. new Vitas and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. that. <laughs> I see nothing wrong with it. I mean, if <laughs> you enjoy having unique models that you know might not be seen every day out there in the wild, and it's something you enjoy to do, it's it's, it's whatever. <laughs> I mean, the reason why I had three at one time. I mean, I only have how many do I have right now? I got my Capture Vita, which I got because I wanted to do YouTube videos and record it directly. So, I mean, that's kind of justifiable. Uh, and then I, my original, which I bought day one, um, I didn't want to get rid of it because it, it meant something to me. It was my first Vita, whatnot. Um, and then I bought one for my girlfriend. So, that, that's hers. But if she ever breaks up with me, it's back to being mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of Vitas that I really want. Like, there's... Uh, a couple of the ones that are in Japan that I would be like, yes, if I had the money, they would be mine. But I don't have the money, so... I mean, if you have the money, go for it. It's something you enjoy. Why not? 
you're supporting Sony, <laughs> unlike they support themselves. What about you, Kyle? I have no problem with somebody collecting, you know, consoles or especially Vita because the more people buy a Vita, that's that's good. Even if those numbers go up, because you're buying five Vitas, that's cool with me. <laughs> because we need to get kind of the word out there that people love their Vitas. Um, but yeah, I don't have any extra Vitas myself, so personally, I don't collect them. Although I have to say that I would get another Vita for um, other region accounts. Um, I got a PlayStation TV, and I was originally going to mostly use that for other region accounts. I was going to put my Japanese one on there and kind of maybe go to the European one or whatever when I kind of felt like it. Um, but I, I kind of play it too much with the North American account, so that's not going to work. So I would need <laughs> another PlayStation TV or another Vita um, to set that up, which I would like to do, but I don't have the money. and. I don't really want to buy a 2000. So yeah. if, if I got, you know, a limited or something like that, I would, I would have to go for an OLED model, try and find one to live somewhere. And, uh, as for the limited editions, I'm not too fond of the, the older, um, style ones for the, the OLED. So unless they, you know, put one of those sweet ass Toro, um, engravings or, the, you know, a 20th anniversary Vita with an early Dio, I haven't thought I'm going to be getting any extra Vitas. <laughs> and especially yeah. since I don't have the money. <laughs> yeah, it's not cheap. No, it is not. <laughs> Vitas are expensive to collect. Let's yeah. put it that way. They're not, it's not so much expensive to have one Vita, but I think, you know, once you get into having three Vitas, like some people, then it gets a little hey. expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Especially when one's a capture beta that costs the whole life. Oh yeah, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, the capture beta is ridiculously expensive, but it's been worth it so far. Yeah, I would totally mug you for it if I if I saw you on the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Kyle. <laughs> You're welcome, Tyler. <laughs> Alright, so yeah. I think moving on to the next comment question. Uh, this one's from Mage of Revenants, and that's at Mage underscore Revenants on Twitter. And he says, I think that's E. Yes, I believe it's E. Um, are any of you exclusive to the Vita? Either way, what are your preferences? Um, I mainly play the Vita, but occasionally I play my PS4 and Back in the day, I used to play the Xbox a lot, but now I don't have an Xbox. And I do have a 3DS, but I tweeted a little bit ago, I think a couple days ago, that I have like, I just turned my 3DS on. It's been dead for like months. <laughs> but I just don't care to play anything on it. There's nothing that interests me. And the one game that did interest me, I found out it's a game I can't stand the style of how it plays. So I'm like, nope, never mind. Um, <laughs> and that was that Persona Q game. I can't stand first person dungeon crawler or dungeon RPGs or whatever. Anyways. Um so yeah. Uh what do I play mainly? Everything I can. I've got too many games. Lately well, we already talked about it in the beginning of the podcast, but what what I've been playing, I've been playing a lot lately and whatnot, so just refer back to what I said earlier. <laughs> what about you, Kyle? Well, I'm not exclusive to the Vita. I have the whole current PlayStation family, I guess you'd call it. Um, I've got a PlayStation Vita, I've got a PlayStation TV, I've got a PlayStation 3, and a PlayStation 4. And I kind of just float around. I mean, I, I, I prefer the Vita, I believe. Um, that's what I play the most on, um, even though I have games on other systems that I probably should play, um, but um, it, it's just kind of what what draws me the easiest. It's what I kind of pick up the easiest because I'm a multitasking kind of person. I don't generally sit in one spot, so unless I'm remote playing something, um, I, I'm generally playing Vita. Um, although I do do dabbling uh, some PlayStation Four, usually at least once a week. Although I've been ignoring it the last month 
with all these crazy reviews and such. Okay. Um, so yeah, um, my PlayStation 3 is actually kind of neglected other than as a media center. So I've been using it to like stream stuff for my media server. Um, but yeah, I've, I've pretty much played all but like six games that I want to play that are out on PlayStation 3. So that's, it's kind of just sitting there. And then my PlayStation TV gets almost as much use as my Vita, but probably not going to continue that much. Um, I think into the future, I think it'll probably even out to be like two thirds Vita, one third PlayStation TV. Interesting. But it's, it's, it's all Vita games, so I don't, I don't really play. Well, I, I wouldn't really play, um, PlayStation 1 games on the, on the Vita TV. Um, I'll just play those on my Vita. And I don't really play PSP games because I played pretty much all the ones that I wanted to play back when I had one of those up until I got a Vita. So, yeah, Vita games across the PlayStation TV and Vita is probably the best bet if you're wondering what I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. Yeah. Good times, good times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, moving on uh, to our last question here, unless somebody slips one in before, you know, we're up here. Um, but what is the best PlayStation Plus surprise and game you didn't expect to enjoy, etc.? And that one's from Brian C. at Johnny Dork, J-O-H-N-N-Y-D-O-R-K on Twitter. So what do you think, Tyler? <laughs> I'm trying to think because that's that's two questions, right? Which what game were you was I surprised to see was on Plus, and then which one did, was I surprised to have be fun, or was it the same? I'm confused. <laughs> I, I think I think he's I, I could be wrong, but I think he's saying your best PlayStation Plus surprise, and then it's like a game that you didn't expect to enjoy it doesn't have to be from Plus, but just okay. All right, so. The, PlayStation Plus Surprise. Um, I don't really know if I've had one, really. Personally. But I, I'm glad that I was able to get uh, uh, Uncharted Golden Abyss because I actually never bought that game. Um, I've never played an Uncharted game, so you can all hate me right now. <laughs> on the PS3s, I've never played any of them. Um, but yeah, I saw it on the Vita. I was like, the game looks really badass. The graphics look amazing. Maybe I'll get it someday. And then when it came to Plus, I was like, so free game. Bought it. Or downloaded it and beat the crap out of the game. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then one game I didn't think to be good, but was, I guess, I would say Rainbow Moon. That game was actually also on Plus. But I really wanted it because it looked somewhat interesting. But then... It's the style of game I really don't like, so I was really confused as to why I wanted it. And I was like, you know what? I probably won't like it, so just ignore it. Then it came out on Plus, I played it, and I was like, wow, I actually really like this game. And I was surprised by that. <laughs> what you, Kyle? All right, well, I only got Plus, I think it was August or September of last year, even though I had my Vita since December 2012. Um, so... I might have missed some in there that I would have said, you know, hey, that's awesome or whatever. Uh, but uh, I think I think mine was was probably Gravity Rush. Um, as I said before, um, I played the demo and I was completely uninterested. I was just like, meh. And then uh, I I did downloaded it from Plus when I got Plus, and I was like, well, I'll try it. You know, whatever, something to do, and. I started up and I just played like crazy and I got all the DLC and I platinumed in 100% of the bastard. So that was, that was quite a ride and I'm eagerly hoping that they bring Gravity Rush 2 or whatever they end up calling it to Vita. Um, and it, that they do it soon. <laughs> Cause I was really looking forward to that when they teased that. So yeah, Gravity Rush. Um, but I want to give a honorable mention, I guess to Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed. Um, I probably wouldn't have bought that on my own. So that was actually kind of a surprise, I guess. Um, <laughs> uh, so that kind of fits with the second one too, although I don't think 
that's what I'll call for my surprise. Um, <laughs> but Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed. Um, we played it quite a few times on Lunch Play. I've gone into it by myself. I still haven't completed it, but I've, I've gotten pretty far, and I, I'm really enjoying it. So that's one of the ones that I've been going back to now that I have my 64 game bike to, to finish off. Because that was a good one. Yeah. yeah. Other than that, though, I haven't really downloaded a whole lot off Plus. Like, I've tagged a bunch of stuff, but I haven't really, you know, played or, or downloaded it. It's kind of the stuff at the back of my backlog, so. <laughs> Very nice. All right, yeah, so that's I've, all. Well, I, I, I guess I could say my surprise, too. I don't know. Go for it. Um, so, my biggest surprise, kind of, and I guess technically it's not a surprise because so many people would call this their biggest surprise, but Persona 4. Um, um, so, yeah, I, I didn't, I like, looking at it from the outside, I was like, I don't see what's so good about that, like, whatever. But then so many people recommended it and stuff, and I I really hadn't been in RPGs. I was like, whatever, I'll try it. And I tried it, and damn. <laughs> damn. So that, that spurred my love for RPGs, and now I am RPG man. Yeah. Other than the cheesy ones and really kind of awkward stuff that I don't want to get into, um, I'm now into RPGs, all thanks to that game, and that is so far um, my favorite RPG that I've played. So yeah, Persona Four. <laughs> Although it's not really a surprise because everyone says it's great, <laughs> so you shouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Very good choice. That's actually kind of one for me, too, because I didn't really know anything about it. I jumped in and loved it, so... Yeah. There we go. Alright, so that's all our, all our questions this week. Ah, uh, yes. I think so, Maurice. Yep, yeah, no Maurice up one minute at the end there, so we're all good. <laughs> Alright, let's end the, or go to check this out, which is with me, and I think I've done this game before, but it's on sale right now, and it kind of makes me laugh. Both so there's two versions of the game. There's the original, and then there's the complete edition that comes with all the DLC. The complete edition is literally, literally 50 cents more. So you need to get... No, no, I lied. It's, <laughs> it's 49 cents cheaper than just getting the regular version of it. So people are getting gypped by buying the regular version and not buying the complete edition. Just saying. That's pretty whack, Tyler. Yeah, but anyways, you should pick it up because it's a fun game. And it is Castle Storm. We had uh, Bobby from Zen Studios in a way old episode of the VitaCast talking about this game. And that was a fun episode. But the game is really good. So it's on sale for the regular edition is four ninety nine with Plus. And then the complete edition, which comes with the game and three DLC packs, is four fifty. So definitely buy the complete edition. <laughs> there's no reason not to buy the complete edition so so yeah that's my check this out but what I'm gonna jump in here what because <clears throat> I know it's not my week but I have to say go buy Sword Art Online because if you don't have it it's twenty three ninety nine right now I think on plus Correct. it's twenty seven ninety nine regular sale. So if you don't have plus and you want to sale, it's still on sale and it's quite a bit cheaper. So like, I mean, if you've been hesitating, this game has well over a hundred hours of content. It's an awesome RPG. Um, it has so many different kind of routes you can take in, in upgrading your character and building their skills and getting their, their whole setup. It's just a really good game. Um, the only thing I kind of can complain about is the translation and, um, which, it's, it's, you can figure what they're saying all the time, like 99.9999% of the time. Um, there's stuff kind of going on with the grammar and, and the translation as far as, um, I, I, I think it's, it's mostly word order. So you, you kind of screws up when you're reading the stuff, but if you go back and actually look at it, you can figure what's going on sometimes. Um, but it doesn't even get that bad. Um, that often like i mean it's one here one there um but it does kind of distract so i just wanted to warn about that 
um, as well as the story being a bit light, I guess we'd call it, in the middle. Um, the start of the game and the end of the game, the story is really strong, but the middle is kind of a fan circus mess, let's just <laughs> call it. Um, so if you're looking for great gameplay, which like 90% of the game, I guess, 95% of the game is gameplay, um, not, you know, these text things that you can pretty much ignore <laughs> if you don't really care about that. Um, so you can just skip through them or whatever. Um, but the, the actual gameplay and, you know, progression and, and, the different stuff you can do in the Iron Crowd area and the Hollow area. Um, it's just, it, it's a lot of content, a great game, tons of stuff to do, tons of way to upgrade your character, tons of different guys to fight, tons of different levels to fight up to. I mean, it's just, it's lots to do and it's cheap and there's no reason you should buy it. Unless you're one of those people who are physical only and then imported from Asia because there's a physical Asian edition that's in English that's pretty close to the translation and same shit. Oh, right. But get the game. Wait, but you probably shouldn't do that because then you can't download the update. That adds a ton of crap. Unless you load it on the Asian account. It depends kind of how you... Yeah, I guess it depends on how you set it up. I don't know. Just buy it. It's on sale. Yeah, I just buy the game. Tell I, 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 Namco that you <laughs> want their games to come here by buying their game and saying, guess what? We will buy games that we want. So My recommendation is if you buy one digital game this December, it's sort of a line at a cheap price. <laughs> there you go. All right, Boom. let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's hope. All right, so uh, you can find all the stories we talked about on the thebeatalounge.net. Uh, we're all on Twitter. I'm at, or nope, the Vita Lounge is at the Vita Lounge. I'm at Mr. Fields Vita Reviews. Kyle is at Tathlon Tactics. We're on Facebook. Just search the Vita Lounge. We're also on YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash lounge play. We do lounge plays every Saturday at, uh, oh God, it's been a while, 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, and 9 p.m. Uh, GMT, right? Yes. Yeah. All right. And then uh, join the forum, uh, vivalounge.net slash forum, sign up, join the conversation, introduce yourself, all that fun stuff. And we're all on iTunes. Uh, just look us up and rate us. Let us know how we're doing. And, and before you go, oh. I just want to announce that the first two sets of videos from the Extra Life 2014 are now up. So... Part one of three and two of three, and the other one should be, probably be up either by the time this podcast hits you or within days. So check that out. Oh, yeah. That was a lot of fun and a lot of work to get those videos done. So <laughs> And a lot of gaming. <laughs> oh, yeah. So enjoy those videos. There's some good ones out there. <laughs> there you go. We're out of here. Bye. Later. Later.